Praise the Lord. You're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. <clears throat> this um, crusade comes up every 6 p.m. GMT plus one, broadcasting from Nigeria. And it is always on healing the word of God, the power of God, and the anointing of God, reaching out to people to minister healing unto them. And I will be talking about faith to receive your miracle. You know, most people um, put their ability to receive or whatever they want to receive from God, they put it on the man of God and don't exercise their own faith. But the Bible encourages that you have your faith to receive your healing. And how does faith work? Faith is based on the word of God. The spoken word, the written word, the promised word. And when you receive the promises of God, you believe them. Like that woman with the issue of blood, she heard about Jesus and what Jesus has done in the life of other people. She believed that. Then she made up her mind, what is she going to do? She said, if she can just touch the hem of his garment, she will be made whole. That's her own meditation on the word of God. That if they say this man is anointed, we read from the Old Testament that the anointing that is on Aaron does not stop on Aaron's head. It flows to the head, from the hair of the head, to the beard, and then to the cloth, and then even to the skirts, and down to the whole of his garments. So, because her case is a case that is considered like leprosy, where you are not sure people are going to attend to you because you are supposed to be in quarantine. Anybody that is having issues of blood or anything issued out of the body is considered unclean. And whatever is affecting her is considered to be <coughs> infectious. And so can affect other people. So they quarantine them somewhere. Uh, so that they don't come to where others are, so that their disease will not infect others or affect others. But when she heard about Jesus, she made up her mind that since all I've heard about him shows that he's an anointed man of God, the anointing doesn't stop on his head, the anointing is not only in his hand, the anointing must also be in his clothes. So I will just touch the clothes. And once I touch the clothes, I will be made whole. Just like anybody touch my clothes or sit where I sat, they say it's infected with my disease. So that's why people don't like to sit where I sit or to touch what I touch. But now, if clothes can carry disease, then his own clothes can carry healing. And because he's anointed, and the anointing on the head of Aaron flows to the clothes of Aaron. So the anointing in the life of Jesus flows through the clothes of Jesus. So he make, she made up her mind that she will look out to wherever Jesus is found in the community. She will also make sure she touched the hem of his garment. And as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, she will be made whole. That's all her own faith. She had the word. She believed the word. Then she went out to act upon that word, corresponding action. And also, on getting to the place where the crowd are, she pulled through the crowd to be able to get to where she can touch the hem of his garment. And she did. As she did, the Bible said, she received her healing. She touched and moved away. But Jesus stopped and said, this woman that somebody touched me. Peter was even asking that, look, a lot of people would have been touching you. The crowd is all over here. Said, no, this particular person touched with the touch of faith because she has received a measure of my anointing. So the anointing I carry, if you check the measure, a portion of this has gone to somebody for healing. And I know whenever such things happen, that something leaves my body, an issue, it leaves my body. Virtue rather leaves my body is out to go and solve an issue in the life of somebody. I don't know who that person is, but I know somebody touched me. 
because I know power went down for me. Eventually, the woman showed up. Sir, I'm the one. I've had 12 years issue of blood. I can't afford to come and see you and tell you I'm not supposed to even come out. But by my faith, I came against all odds that even if I don't talk to you, if I can touch the hem of your garment, I'll be made whole. And I have touched. I'm already okay. My body is okay. I can feel it in my body. That whatever was wrong with my body before is now restored. The issue of blood, the flow has stopped. I've even checked myself. I find that nothing is flowing there anymore. So thank you. Jesus Christ said, it's good you have come to let us know what God has done in your life. Now you can go, my daughter. Your faith has made you whole. That is what I want to emphasize. Faith in God will make 12 years problem to be solved in a moment. Once your faith is in place, the word of God is already in place. The blood of Jesus is already in place. The Holy Spirit is already in place. But how will this thing come to you? You've got to have your faith. And how does faith come? Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. So the more you hear the word of God, the more you have faith in the ability of God to wrought miracle in your life. So you can be preaching in a place and a lot of people are hearing you. But not all of them are hearing with the ears of faith. But if you hear the word of God and you believe the word of God, that word is going to effect healing in your body. And the anointing is going to bring the healing that you need. So I want to develop on that issue of faith. The woman confessed, she spoke out in her faith. Confession states the fact that are written in the Bible. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. He acts on behalf of our confession. It is not a mind over matter kind of thing. Okay? I thank, I thank you that you have heard me. He said this. Even though Lazarus was still dead, Jesus, when he got to the grave of Lazarus, he, he, he did something so wonderful. He said, if you believe, you see the glory of the Lord. And faith comes by hearing, not by seeing. When Jesus stood outside the tomb of Lazarus, he prayed. He said, I thank you that you have heard me. He said this even though Lazarus was still dead. Confession is not denying reality, but meeting it head on with the profession of God's word. Faith is not an irrational act. It is the most rational act in the world. It is based on the word of God, the highest possible evidence of things not seen, things that are forever settled in heaven on the basis of the word. So confess God's word, even if you have contrary feelings, keep on confessing his word. Confession is made unto salvation. With or without feeling, the same is true of healing. When you confess fact, then Jesus will act on your confession. Okay? You confess first, then Jesus acts on your confession. You will overcome through the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. That's Revelation 12, 11. You do not need sympathy. Suffering alongside of to be healed, but you need substitution. Suffering in the place of Sympathy is just somebody who is pitying you. Hey, you are feeling bad, it's also feeling bad. You are crying, it's also helping you to cry. But that's not what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ has already substituted for your problem. Where your sin should kill you and make you to be the soul that sinner shall die and should be separated from God and from heaven forever. Jesus Christ came, died on the cross of Calvary. He had no sin, but he took over your own sin. And also, he had no sickness. He took over your own sickness. By stripes, you are healed. So you receive the stripes and the punishment for your sin. He had no sin. So he has substituted for you. 
So you can just take your place in that divine substitution. Okay. Um, the, this was already done by Jesus. Negative confession glorifies Satan. When you tell of your troubles, you are giving a testimony to Satan's ability to get you into trouble. You are smeared with the words of your mouth. If you read Proverbs 6, 21, you're going to get that there. Okay, is your confession based on God's word or on your symptoms? The word declares healing. Symptoms declare um, feelings and the illness. Which one will you declare? As a part of your confession of faith, begin to praise God for healing. Jonah praised God for deliverance while still in the belly of the whale. Okay, in the river. Okay, in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 15, he speaks of the sacrifice of praise. We are to praise him as we enter his gates. Not when we <laughs> that's we don't praise him when we leave the gate or offer our petition and then <laughs> and the petition has been granted. That's not what it's when we get to the gate before we even ask for anything that we have been praising him. Okay, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 16 indicate that praise is the gate in the wall. Is the gate in the wall of salvation. Through praise, you can hang your own gate and walk through it to claim the benefit of salvation. You will not confess that Jesus is your Lord and then act like an unbeliever. You will not confess that he is your healer and then act as an unbeliever. No word of God is devoid of power. When Peter was able to let down the nets, he did not argue. When he was told to let down the nets, he did not argue. He did not deny the Father. They had fished all night and caught nothing. He acted on God's words in spite of their fruitless human efforts. When you act in faith, you do not depend on your feelings. You may not feel like asking for prayer. You may not feel anything when you are being prayed for and you may not feel any better at first do you want healing or feeling healing is better than feeling you can be healed and never feel anything base your faith on the word of god and not on your feelings faith is the evidence of things not seen if you read Hebrew 11 1. You do not need faith if you already have feel healed. So it's when you have not feel the healing that you need faith to be able to get your healing, irrespective of your feeling. The word of God and faith are the senses by which a spiritual person is directed. The natural person works by natural senses. A spiritual person works by spiritual senses. When natural evidence conflicts with the word of God, walk by spiritual senses. Your natural senses may be conv convincing, but when God's word differs from them, then you act on the word of God. Are you getting me? Abraham's physical senses said that it was impossible for him to have a son at that age, over 90, close to 100. It's not possible physically. Yet Abraham believed God. He acted as if what God had said would come to pass. Abraham did not consider his own body, though dead. Read that in Romans chapter 4, verse 19. Do not consider the uh, condition of your body. Instead, consider him who is the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. That's in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. 
It is not enough just to ignore your body. When God tells you to take off, he also tells you to put on. When he tells you to cast out demons, the empty void must be filled. When you bind, you are also to lose. The same pattern applies here. When you do not consider the symptoms in your body, you must focus your attention on him and consider him as your healer. People believe in the power of disease with confidence. They believe in the symptoms the doctor tells them they will experience before they experience them. When it comes to healing, we say, I will never believe until I see it. Faith replies, you will never see it until you believe it. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. You see? Evidence of what you have not seen. So if you are waiting till where you see before you believe, you miss faith. David said, I have believed to see. That's Psalm 27 verse 13. He did not say, I had to see before I would believe. He acted in faith before he saw the evidence. The word demands that you walk by faith. The senses demand that you walk by sight. It is not that you deny the reality of the things that are seen, which is the symptoms, but you focus instead upon the things that are unseen, which is your faith. Okay, that's in 1 Corinthians 4, 16. If God depends upon what you call your faith, he will be in terrible trouble. It's not depending on who you are. It's not depending on what you possess. <clears throat> what gives you your confidence? To the fact that he is not depending on your faith at all. He's depending on the faith flowing through you. So look at your hands. God is not depending on the physical strength of those hands to bring healing and deliverance. He is depending on a supernatural anointing flowing through your hand and your entire being to accomplish his work. It must be by God's faith. This is the only faith that does not fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Faith based on the word of God does not fail. Faith based on the ability of God does not fail. Faith based on the promises of God does not fail. Faith based on the power of God does not fail. Faith based on the anointing of God does not fail. But faith that is based on physical symptoms, feelings, and physical conditions of your body will definitely fail. But when we trust God, it can never fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I'd like to pray with you today. And I'd like you to concentrate not on the sickness that's in your body. Put your attention on the ability of God. As I stretch forth my hand to pray for you today, the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ is oozing out of these hands and oozing out unto you. By faith in God, you believe what God is able to give you. Through his written word, by his stripes, you are healed. When did you receive the stripes? 2,000 years ago. That means since then, you have been healed. Right now, once you believe that word, you act on it by stepping out in faith and doing what you couldn't do before immediately after this prayer. Just lay your hand on that sickness or wherever the sickness is. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone that has heard the word of God today and they believe you for healing, I ask that the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ flow to your body, to your mind, to your spirit, and heal you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. You check your body. Something happens to you now, immediately after that prayer. You cross-check and you see the difference. Then you give the glory to God in testimony. Thank you for listening. The program continues tomorrow. Until then, 
be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.